Hello and welcome Crypt Dwellers. Today we take a look at three platformers for the Sony PlayStation. Let's go. In the mid-1990s, 3D gaming was still in its infancy. With the 2D sprite-based consoles like the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo fading away like Marty McFly at the Enchantment Under the Sea dance, companies were jumping on the bandwagon and vying for market share with the release of their own home consoles. Panasonic 3DO, Philips CDI, Atari Jaguar and the rest all tried and failed. Born from the ashes of a collapsed deal between Nintendo and Sony to create a new CD console, with Nintendo still opting for cartridge-based media for the Nintendo 64, the Sony PlayStation, which boasted a huge marketing campaign, even beating Sega and Nintendo's efforts that generation, was one that would succeed. Let's take a look back at a selection of 3D platformers released for Sony's pioneering juggernaut. Released in 1996 and published by Bandai Japan, Magical Hoppers, known as Pandemonium in the US and Europe, is a 2.5D game set in a 3D environment. It features two main characters, Clam and Guppy, who must save the planet from impending doom. Both characters have different abilities. Clam can do a power roll and Guppy has the ability to double jump. They both possess magic abilities where they can fire balls of magic at enemies. Players must traverse the levels collecting coins and treasure to gain lives and improve level completion. Even though the game offers a 2D gameplay, the levels really come to life and twist and turn creating a nice sense of scope and depth. The 18 levels present a fair challenge and offer up a boss fight every 6 levels. These are fairly fun and offer a challenge figuring out how to beat them. The game has some nice features with characters also morphing into animals like frogs, dragons and turtles. A fun game, even if the graphics haven't aged well and the controls could be a bit tighter. Klonoa, Daughter Phantom Isle, was released in 1997 in Japan and published by Namco. Like Magical Hoppers, it offers 2D gameplay but set in a 3D rendered world, so the levels twist and turn and the player can interact with objects set outside the path. The story centres around Klonoa, a cat-like creature who has been having some vivid dreams. When his dreams come true, Klonoa and his ring spirit friend set out to investigate. They encounter Gardius and sidekick Joker, who kidnap a songstress Lafis while searching for a magical pendant. Klonoa learns of some news about the pendant and sets off in search. Gameplay is fairly straightforward. Klonoa can grab enemies with his wind bullet, a ring that shoots a gust of wind to grab the enemy, and can throw them in various directions or use them to jump higher. Klonoa can also float temporarily in midair. The game to me is beautiful, with excellent presentation and music and amazing character design. Really creates a sense of dreaming and wonder for the player. It's a shame the game didn't sell too well over here in the UK, but a sequel was released for the PlayStation 2, and a remake of the first game is also available on the Nintendo Wii. <laughs>
Croc Legend of the Gobbos was published by Fox Interactive and released in 1997. Argonaut, the developers, who helped make the Super FX chip for the Super Nintendo, originally had planned for it to be a 3D Yoshi game, but after the pitch to Nintendo, they rejected it. Found as a baby floating in a basket, Croc was raised by a furry race known as the Gobbos. One day, the evil Baron Dante invades Gobbo Valley and kidnaps the Gobbos. Croc must set out and free the trapped Gobbos and restore peace to the land. Gameplay is set in a fully 3D world, much like Super Mario 64, but the controls and camera are not as tight. You must collect gems in the level as these act as Croc's health bar. You get hit by an enemy and you lose your gems, like Sonic the Hedgehog and his rings. If you get hit again with no gems, then you lose a life. The level objective is to reach a gong and hit it to be transported to the next level. During the level, you can rescue gobbos, solve puzzles and collect coloured gems to access a secret door and collect a hidden gobbo. You don't have to get all the gobbos to progress, but you will need to collect them all to get the best ending in the game. Croc can run and jump, but can also climb, which is a nice addition not seen in similar games. He can also sidestep and turn 180 degrees to do a quick turn. Levels are varied and offer a fair challenge, with boss battles also present at the end of some stages. Croc is a competent 3D platformer that is almost let down by some awkward controls, but offers a fair challenge and has some good music. If I had to pick a favourite of the three, it would have to be Klonoa. It just hits all the right notes as a platformer and feels a bit like a mix of Mischief Makers and Kirby. Even though the PS1 was more popular than the N64, none of these games quite come close to the greatness of Mario 64. But for those looking for a fresh challenge or bored with Mario 64, then you can't go wrong with Klonoa, Croc or Magical Hoppers. Please comment below on your favourite platformers for the Sony PlayStation. And if you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. Till next time, Crypt Dwellers, goodbye.